aren't aware, my name is Simon Stanley and I am the regional manager for South and Southeast Asia. So today we're going to give you a little bit of an overview of all things happening at Royal Walloway. Uh, we'll talk to you a little bit about the programs, the campus, accommodation, and it'll also be an opportunity to talk about any of the mitigation that we are going to be um, doing in regards to the COVID-19 pandemic, which I'm sure um, collectively we're all feeling at the moment. So I'm just going to continue to my next slide. Okay, so I'm just going to run through some uh, numbers with you. So we are a top 20 ranked university in the UK. So we're currently number 19. So that's a very strong position for, for the institution to be in. Um, we are, we have currently have about a 90,000 alumni who are spread amongst 165 countries. Uh, many of our alumni are based in India. Um, we have, um, India is our second largest international pool of, of students that we have at the university. So you may have heard of Royal Holloway through one of our alumni, or you may have had friends that have studied here already that have gone through the Royal Holloway experience. 81% uh, of our research is world leading or deemed internationally excellent by the um, research exercise, REF. So we are a research intensive university and that just speaks for itself. And we also, sorry, could you just give me one moment? Yeah, so we're a medium sized institution so at the moment we have approximately 10 and a half thousand students. Um, majority of those students are undergraduate students, about 8,393. And 20% of our international students are from outside of the EU. So Indians do make up a very large proportion of our uh, international student body. We currently have about 2,200 postgraduate students. So about 10 and a half thousand students overall. Now, our location is important. Um, it's a very unique selling point for Royal Holloway. So we're in, located in the southeast of England. And we are, if you can see on our map here, we're in a town called Egham. So Egham is approximately 40 minutes from central London. Um, we're about seven miles from Heathrow Airport, where you can fly um, from India direct to London Heathrow. And we are, yeah, just 40 minutes from central London on the train. So it's, it benefits students in many ways because we do have a beautiful leafy campus set in 130 acres of um, beautiful woodland, but also we are very accessible to central London as well. So this particular slide here gives you um, an overview of the campus. So everything that you see on this map which is colored in purple is student accommodation. So we are a campus-based institution. So students live on campus as well as study on campus. So it creates a, a, a wonderful community spirit. And everything that you see on this um, map in blue is academic buildings. So everything is all based in the same location. So that is a, is a huge benefit to our student body. You live and you study all in the same place. So as I've mentioned, we are based in Egham in Surrey. Um, you can see a picture here of our founders building. So our founders building um, is very famous. Um, it was opened in 1886 by Queen Victoria. And originally, Royal Holloway was a university just for women. Um, sadly, at that time in society, women were very um, restricted as to what education, if any, they could have. So this institution was developed in the first instance as an institution that would benefit women um, only. Um, there's bars, we have cafes on campus, um, we have a supermarket on campus, access to medical facilities, so th there is a doctor's surgery available. Um, and all of this is, is within the 135 acre um, of, of our stunning parkland. Um, 
We've even got Starbucks on campus. So for those of you who need your caffeine fix to get going in the morning, um, we have many establishments on campus that will enable you to do that. Now, obviously, I've mentioned that we're a top 20 ranked university, which is very important. Um, but it's important what our students think of us as well. So for those of you that aren't aware, there is a national student survey, which happens every year. And this is a chance for students to, to rank their universities and to give a, um, an honest and frank assessment of the institution that they're studying at. So these are quite important because we have no say on that. This is purely what students are saying. And we have an 88% student satisfaction, which is really good. It's a very strong position for us to be in. And we are actually a higher uh, student satisfaction than most of the Russell Group institutions as well. So we are happy in the knowledge that our students are happy. So the campus community, um, as I've mentioned, it's a very international uh, campus. There's about 140 nationalities overall. So when you're in class, you will be in a class with a mixture of, of nationalities and people from all faiths and backgrounds, which we feel creates um, a wonderful learning environment to be in because you're not going to be amongst uh, generally people from your own country you're going to be with people from all over the world so it does create um, a wonderful learning experience the people that will be teaching you are experts in their own field so a lot of them are, are doctorates um, a lot of them have relevant work experience um, and have worked in the industries um, in, in which they are teaching so you can rest assured that um, what you're learning is relevant and, and up to date and um, will be relevant to your future career aspirations. Um, all students will receive um, a lot of support from our student from, from our institution. So everyone is, is assigned a personal tutor and there'll be opportunities for you to regularly meet with your personal tutor to talk about your learning or if there's any concerns that you may have. So it's just about having that support network um, that we offer our students. So students are um, individuals and, and are treated um, as individuals. So as I mentioned, you will be assigned a personal tutor and this is on a one-to-one -one basis. Um, we also have a center for development of academic studies, which is known as CDAS. Um, and what they offer is um, for, for students where perhaps English is not their first language, um, there is support available to students so that they can settle into their studies. And if they feel they need any additional help or support, then our CDAS uh, Centre will be able to, to offer relevant support. So employability is very important um, in this day and age because obviously your objective is to come and study with us. Um, but obviously, down the road, you want to get a job, you want to be employable. Um, there's opportunities for um, job placements while studying at the university. So if you're studying with us, you'll be on um, a student visa and your student visa will allow you to work whilst you study with us. Um, some of our courses actually have um, a work placement as part of the programme. So some of our undergraduate courses will give you the opportunity to work for a year. Um, some of our master's courses, so for example, some of our computer science courses also have the opportunity to do what's known as a one plus one, where you will study uh, in the classroom for your first year. And in the second year, you will be um, required to complete a work placement. And there's lots of support available at the universities to help you find uh, a placement for that. We have over 300 blue chip companies within Surrey. So Surrey is the county that uh, Royal Holloway is located within. We even offer a lot of job placements on campus as well. So generally an average, there's about a thousand employment opportunities on campus every year. And statistically Royal Holloway employs one in seven students. So those can be jobs within our library they can be in some of the retail establishments around the campus. So it's an opportunity for you to um, earn a little bit of pocket money whilst you study. Um, but also, as I've mentioned, some of the courses um, do require a work placement and the placement will be 
based around the course that you are studying. So for example, if you were studying um, our masters in data science, it would be likely that you would do uh, an internship um, within a, a data analyst uh, type role. So I'm just gonna run through with you generally the academic schools that we have, and then talk to you a little bit generally about what sort of courses that we offer at Royal Holloway. So we have our academic school of humanities, we have engineering, physical and mathematical sciences, law and social sciences, life sciences and the environment, business and management and performing and digital arts. And within these six academic schools, there are a number of departments um, within those schools and I will run through those very quickly. Um, but first of all, obviously, we need to address the fact that we are in a unique position at the moment. So the fact that we're actually conducting this um, event today via a, a webinar um, is testament to that. Normally, I would be in India at this time of year. I would be attending events all over India, um, meeting prospective students, discussing their offers or their applications to Royal Holloway. Um, but due to the COVID-19 pandemic, um, we're all unfortunately stuck at home at the moment. I'm, uh, I'm conducting this webinar from my, um, from my house. And I know that it's been tough in the UK as well as in India. Um, so I'm just gonna run through a little bit about what plans we have as an institution with regards to the COVID-19. Um, the good news is that we are planning on starting classes in September. So our plan is that classes will begin as usual on September 21st this year. Now, I understand and we all understand that that might not be possible for everyone. Um, it, it may be difficult for students to get to campus at this stage uh, by the 21st of September. Um, but what I'm here today to reassure you is that there's no need for you to, to worry about that because we are looking at alternative options for you. So we're offering from this September the option of a flexible learning offer. So what that means is if you're not able to join us on campus in September, you will be able to start your program from home. There will be um, tutorials, seminars, teaching support, online um, lectures, which will be conducted um, on a virtual platform online. And that's for all of our courses. Um, when this pandemic began, we started offering a lot of our courses online and the feedback that we've had from students was particularly strong. Um, they liked the fact that they could watch lectures in their own time and uh, at a time that was convenient to them and they could watch lectures again and again um, throughout the year. So this really did benefit um, our students. And obviously, as I've mentioned, if travel restrictions are in place and you're not able to come in September, then what we are looking to do is that your course will start online and then as and when you're able to join us. So for example, if you have um, your visa application uh, in progress and you're not able to, to fly over, you can start the course. And then if you have to join us three weeks, six weeks, 10 weeks after the start of term, you won't be at any disadvantage because you will literally fly to the UK, arrive on campus, and then you will start your face-to-face -face learning from the point at which you would have um, from being online. So you won't be at any disadvantage at all. Um, it would just be a case of um, hopping from um, online learning to face-to-face -to -face, and it is flexible. So if you're one week late, if you can't get to the university till mid-November, as an example, you'll be able to do that. There are also opportunities for students who perhaps don't want to join us in September. So for example, you've got two options basically. Number one is you start your course in September in person or you will start online and you'll follow the online um, curriculum and then you will join us. If you're not really keen on that, then for certain courses, this is not all courses, but for certain courses, there will be the option 
of a January start. And we will have notified students who hold offers from us um, if that is an available option for you. So rather than doing the online learning and then coming to the campus, you can actually just defer your offer to January. So looking at the PG courses, these are the courses that will be offering September and a January start. So if you are looking to apply to any of these courses or hold an offer for any of these courses, you will be able to start in either September or in January. Or you can um, follow the flexible online path and start your course in September online and then join us as and when you're ready and um, available to come to the campus itself. So you can see here a lot of the sort of computer science and management courses. Um, and these are the courses which do tend to be um, very popular with our Indian students. So um, you can see the list here and the ones with the star next to it are the courses that do include the year in industry. So that's a two year program and the second year is your work placement. Um, we're also offering um, a limited number of courses available at undergraduate level, which also will have the opportunity of September and January. So these are generally uh, management and law programs. And again, these courses with the management do offer the option of a year in business as well. So this is just to sort of reassure you that if you're not able to come in September, don't panic. You can still start your course and join us as and when you can. Or if you're looking at studying one of these particular courses, you can defer to January. So I think that should offer some reassurance to you uh, if you are worrying about uh, starting your program with us. We've done some press releases in India. So you may see this appearing in the next few days. This was actually this week. So we've put a press release out in India to highlight the um, options available for our students. Um, so I think this is this is going to be a good thing for our Indian students. It doesn't mean that you have to defer to next September. It does mean you can start your course this year as planned. And if you are coming to campus and you will be able to start in September, then we are currently working on ways to assure that it will be a safe learning environment for you. Um, we expect social distancing to um, not go away overnight. Um, I think this is going to be the new normal for the um, foreseeable future. So what we will do is ensure that when you do come to campus that it will be in um, a safe learning environment for you. So let's look very quickly now at the particular schools and the departments within those schools. So within the School of Humanities, you have the departments of classics, English, history, languages, literatures, and cultures. So those are the, the departments within the School of Humanities. Um, I'm not gonna list every course that we offer because this presentation would be considerably long. All of our courses, um, you can find on our website on the um, course finder option and then from that you will be able to see um, all of the modules and the classes that you will take and the structure of the program so it is my advice that you will go to the website for course specific information but what i will outline to you now is the departments that are um, available at royal holloway so that's the school of humanities we then have the School of Engineering, Physical and Mathematical Sciences. And within that particular school, we've got departments in computer science, electronic engineering, information security, mathematics and physics. So we tend to get quite a lot of Indian students um, into the School of Engineering, Physical and Math Sciences. Computer science is a big strength at the university. So we have a number of different courses in the field of computer science, which offer the year in industry. Uh, information security is also very popular um, with our Indian students. And it's important to note that the information security courses 
have GCHQ accreditation. So for those of you that aren't aware, um, GCHQ is the sort of UK intelligence agency um, or the spy agency, so to speak. Um, and they actually accredit our courses. So that's, that's very important to note. The next school is law and social sciences. So we've got departments in economics, law and criminology, politics, international relations and philosophy and social work. So those are the departments within the School of Law and Social Sciences. We have life sciences and the environment. So we have departments in biological sciences, earth sciences, geography and psychology. Um, so psychology is proving more popular with our Indian students as well. Uh, the clinical psychology program is, is, is particularly popular. Um, and we offer that at undergraduate and at master's level. And School of Business and Management. So you've got the list of our departments available here. Um, a lot of these courses do offer the option of a work placement as well. So if you want to gain some valuable work experience, you will be able to do so um, within the School of Business and Management. And um, as I've already mentioned, the university will help you find um, a work placement. It's not a guarantee because we obviously can't do the interview for you, but we will certainly give you all the support um, that you need to, to help you find a, a placement for you. And then lastly, we have the School of Performing and Digital Arts. So we have departments of drama, uh, theatre, media arts and music. And the picture you can actually see here is our chapel on campus. So this is our multi-faith chapel and it's located within the Founders Building. And I'm sure you'll agree that it's absolutely stunning. So that's just a little picture of one of the um, facilities on our campus. So looking at entry criteria, some of you may have already received your offer. So if you have, congratulations. And for those of you that are looking to make an application, I'm just gonna run through generally um, what our entry criteria is. So looking at our bachelor degrees from India, for those of you studying or who have studied your 12th standard, we generally look for a minimum of 80% in your 12th standard. Um, for students that have scored 70% in the English or higher, then the IELTS is waived. So if you score 80% overall and 70 or higher in the English section of your 12th standard, then there'll be no IELTS requirement. For those of you that have um, been to a school that perhaps offers A-level curriculum or IB, International Baccalaureate, we generally look for grades AAB to ABB. And for IB, we generally look for 665 or 655 at higher level with 32 points overall. All applications for our undergraduate studies are done through UCAS. And um, we don't accept any direct applications. And for any students that have scored below 80%, um, it may be, the option available for you to do a foundation program. So Royal Holloway, in association with Study Group, our foundation provider, offer a one-year international foundation program. So if you weren't able to join direct level onto bachelor, if you did not score 80%, then there is an option for you to study the foundation. And it is located at the same campus. So it is based at Royal Holloway. Looking at postgraduate entry criteria, we will be running a pre-masters from March of next year. But for other programs, they do vary in entry criteria. And obviously, we look at your particular institution that you've studied at. So in India, a lot of the institutions are tiered. So we have tier one, tier two universities. Um, but as a general generalization we look for a, a first class degree from India from a recognized institution and the minimum we would look for is 55 percent um, some of our courses will ask for 60 percent so I know computer science for example uh, you look for 60 percent in your degree in India 
all applications for our bachelor degree, sorry, our um, master's programs are made online through what's known as Royal Holloway Direct, which is our application portal. So you can actually submit an application online. Um, but the benefit that you have is that obviously today's um, event that we're running is um, run in association with SIUK. So SIUK are one of our trusted partners in India and the globe. Um, they will be able to help facilitate your applications to Royal Holloway. So they work closely with us and they will be able to help you with your applications. So they will help guide you with your application processing and that includes gathering your documents. So that would be copies of your certificates, transcripts, your SOP, your LOR, copy of your passport. Um, so you can rest assured that you will be in, in safe hands with them uh, helping you with your application. We do offer online pre-sessional English programs. So for this year, we are running our, our um, pre-sessional English online through study group. We do offer the 12, eight or four week options. Um, you can only apply for a pre-sessional once you hold an offer to the university. Um, most of our Indian students don't generally need to do a pre-sessional program because English is always good and most students will already achieve the required score. But if you do feel you need additional English support, then do consider our um, online pre-sessional course, which will help prepare you for the world of um, academic English. So hopefully you, you are interested in coming to us. Um, you, you're excited about your learning experience, but obviously, you're going to need somewhere to live. Um, there's lots of options available at Royal Holloway. So most of our accommodation is based on campus. So we even have the option of catered halls. So what that means is that for undergraduate students, there is the option of food as part of your housing plan. So it Founders, which is actually the famous building that I was talking about earlier, offers um, catered accommodation in um, single same-sex corridors. Um, we also have Kingswood 1 and 2, which also offers catered accommodation. And we have Reed Hall as well. So those are the catered uh, accommodation options available at the university. And applications for accommodation um, can be made online as well. Um, most of our students tend to live in self-catered accommodation. So that is generally where there will be um, access to a shared kitchen, uh, but they will have their own rooms. Um, so we've got options here, including our George Elliott Halls of Residence, which is our newest self-catered dormitory. Uh, we have Gower and Wedderburn, which offers um, shared kitchen and your own bathroom as well. So that's very popular. Williamson, Tuke and Butler, that also is self-catered, has a single room en suite and a shared kitchen. And then we offer Runnymede, which is just a short journey from the campus. So there's lots of housing available for our students at the, um, at the university. And if at any stage you have any particular questions, I will be sharing my contact information at the end. So if you need to ask any more questions, um, I'll be able to help you. Um, we also have my colleague who's based in Delhi, uh, Karan, and he will also be able to help. Uh, so just rest assured, there is a lot of support uh, available um, to you at this time. Looking at tuition fees, so undergraduate degrees for international students, it, it varies on what course you're studying, but generally it's um, anything from 17,300 to 20,900. For master's degrees, the minimum is 16,800 to 21,000. And then our research or PhDs uh, go up to 20 and a half thousand pounds. Undergraduate scholarship window has closed for this September, but we are still accepting applications um, for our postgraduate uh, scholarships. And the one that tends to be most popular with our Indian students is our principal master's scholarship. So that is worth £4,000. We have 60 available. The deadline has been extended, 
to July 10th. So if you hold an offer at the university for our postgraduate courses, I would encourage you to make an application for the Principal Master's Scholarship. And applications can be submitted uh, online through our uh, portal, which is known as RH Direct. And again, if you have any questions about our scholarships, our website is extremely resourceful. Um, and if not, you can always drop me an email. I, I will share my contact details with you at the end. So social life uh, might look a little different this September because we expect social distancing to, to be in place for a little while longer. But we do have a number of clubs and societies at Royal Holloway. In fact, there's about 130 available. So we have anything from uh, a Bangra dance society. Um, we have sci-fi. We've got art, journalism, jazz, radio. There's so many different options available at the university. So we do actively encourage our students to get involved outside of the classroom. And it's, it's good for you socially. It's, it's a nice way to make friends, uh, to keep fit. Um, and we are looking at ways in which we can offer these online for those students that aren't able to join us um, on campus in the first instance. So as I mentioned, sports facilities, um, you'll see here our um, dry weather pitch. Um, so many available. Um, we've got a sports hall, um, gymnasium. So if, if, if keeping fit, playing sports is something you are interested in, then there's lots of options available uh, to you at Royal Holloway. So what makes Royal Holloway different? There's lots of universities in the UK. So what we need to do is just outline very quickly what makes us different. So you may hold an offer um, at another university and you might be at the point where you're trying to decide which one to choose. So what makes us different? So as I mentioned, we're top 20 ranked university and we have excellence in research and teaching. So it's very important for you to know that you are being taught by world-class professionals in their field. The campus is stunning. So we were actually voted in 2017, I believe, the most beautiful campus in the whole of the UK. So it's, it's phenomenal. Um, there are lots of options um, to, to view our campus. There's virtual tours online, but have a look on our website and, and have a look at some of the videos that we have showing our beautiful campus. It's, it's absolutely stunning. I'm very grateful to be, um, to, to be working at Royal Holloway and, and call Royal Holloway my, my office. Very accessible to London. So as I mentioned, we're just 40 minutes from central London. We're seven miles from Heathrow Airport. So location really is world-class. We offer small class sizes, so we expect that to be um, the norm moving forward whilst we are in a social distancing. So if you are coming to the campus, there will be socially distant, safe classroom environments for you and lots of personal academic support. So we have a culture at Royal Holloway of uh, an open door policy. So if there's anything you're unsure about or you need further answers to, there will be help available at the university for you. This, as I've outlined, there's lots of different accommodation options available, uh, depending on your budget, your needs, whether you need um, food included or not. So um, rest assured that there is going to be an option that's, that's right for you. And um, we are still accepting applications for our uh, accommodation online. And basically, a university that supports our students to succeed. So we want our students, we want the very best from our students. We expect the very best from our students. Um, there's lots of support at the university with our careers department. So we're not one of those universities that offers careers advice in your final year. We actively encourage to open that conversation early on in your studies with us. And we will um, be able to help you with your CV, your resume, and 
making those links and getting your um, profile visible. So whether you need help on things like LinkedIn, um, we obviously want you to do well in the future, we, whether that be in future studies or if you go into a full-time job. Um, so we just, we have this notion that we really want our students to, to succeed um, while studying with us and beyond. So that's a little overview of the institution. Um, you can see my email address here. So if you want to ask anything in the future, if, if, if you don't feel comfortable else asking me today, then please make a note of my email address now and drop me an email and I will be more than happy to um, answer those particular questions. So I'm gonna hand back to Bhavna now and um, she will be asking some of the questions that you may have. So I look forward to answering those and thanks very much for your time. Thank you so much, Simon. So we have Joanna here. Joanna? Uh, hi. hi, hi everyone. Hi, Simon. Um, so we, will, we have a lot of questions on YouTube actually. So I will start with these questions. Right. Uh, and, um, in the meantime, I'd like to encourage everyone to ask any other questions they may have. Um, so um, the, we do have a lot of questions that are very core specific. Okay. So please feel free to, to make your own judgment how much time you want to uh, spend on core specific questions. Sure. Uh, the first question is from Ankit Tripathi. Uh, who would like to get more information about MSc in engineering with management? Okay. Um, we don't offer that specific course at the moment. So we offer um, engineering, actually, sorry, forgive me. Yes, we do offer engineering management. So it's a one year taught masters. Um, does this particular student have a background in engineering management? Do you know? Um, I don't know, but uh, let's see if the student can go back to us and we can move on to the next question. Yeah, uh, I mean, if, 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 if students have particular course questions, it might be better that they email me just because yeah, um, I, agree. I think it would be better for them to drop me an email and I can answer those um, individually rather than um, on here because it, it, it may not be relevant for everyone. So right. I, if you could advise that student to drop me an email and I'll get back to them as soon as definitely, I can. Definitely, definitely. And the next question is from Adi, um, who would like to know if there are any financial aids for LLB undergraduates? Um, yeah, I mean, we do have scholarships available for our undergraduate students. The For, for students wanting to start this year, um, unfortunately, the deadline has now passed. Um, so the... the students would not be able to gain any further financial aid from from the university um, if they were considering for next year uh, so for example if they're a final year student and they're looking to apply next year then yes there are scholarships available um, one of the most popular ones for our indian students is called the international future leaders scholarship um, and that scholarship is worth four thousand pounds um, which is £4,000 off the tuition fees. And students can apply for that online through the RH Direct portal. Um, so yes, if they're looking for this year, unfortunately, no. But for next year, yes, there definitely will be financial aid available. Thank you, Simon. Um, the next question is from Ambar. Um, can I get admission in subject international commercial business in law for graduates? No, unfortunately, we only offer law at undergraduates at the moment. So we offer LLBs. We don't offer any LLMs at the moment, I'm afraid. Thank you. Uh, another question from Leah. Is there any opportunity for PhD students to join? Absolutely, yes. So what we actively encourage research students to do is draw up their research proposal. Um, they then make contact with the department directly. So on the how to apply um, section of our website, there's, an, there's a section which lists all of the uh, departmental um, contacts for PhD applications. So initially what students will do is they will 
reach out to the department themselves with their research proposal. Um, so it's very informal to start with. And what happens is the research proposal will be sent to the department academics. Uh, they will determine if it is an area of research that they wish to supervise. And then if we manage to find a potential supervisor, then we advise on how to make a formal application. Um, it's also an opportunity at that stage for students to ask departments what funding, if any, is available. So a lot of the departments themselves have scholarships available. But yes, generally, in answer, to, in answer to that question, yes, we do have many PhDs available and we ask that students contact departments directly. Again, if any students don't know who to contact, um, my email address should still be on your screens. Drop me an email and I'll happily connect you to the relevant department. Thank you, Simon. Um, the next question um, is um, from Kushi, uh, who would like to get the, the subject list for BSc. So I would encourage the students definitely to, to get in touch with you. And yes. You know, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, uh, that might be a bit too broad. Um, <laughs> a, a question from Abhishek. Uh, can you inform us about economic scores and scholarship pro uh, provided for the course? Sorry, could you just say that again for me? Uh, can you inform us about economic scores and scholarships what? provided for the course? Yeah, sure. So we offer um, MSc Economics. Um, which is a one year taught master's program. And um, students have the option of the principal master's scholarship. So as I mentioned, the deadline has been extended till 10th of July and successful applicants will receive 4,000 pound tuition fee reduction on, on that. Um, so yes, in answer to that, we do offer that course and there is um, scholarships available, which are still open at this stage. Um, uh, another question from Supam, uh, what is the maximum amount of scholarship for engineering course? Okay, so if we're looking at undergraduates and postgraduate, the maximum amount, because there's basically there's two scholarships which are most popular for Indian students. So the undergraduate is the International Future Leaders Scholarship, which is worth £4,000. And for postgraduate students, it's the Principal Master's Scholarship, which is also worth £4,000. So £4,000 is the maximum scholarship amount um, available to students at Royal Holloway. Thank you, Simon. Um, the next question is also a bit broad uh, from Kushi. Okay. Uh, he's asking for a subject list for BSc with scholarships. Um, so Kushi, could you please email Simon directly? Yes, um, please and, do. I'll be happy to answer that. Yeah, via email. Um, another question um, from Avi, is there any help for students who um, need financial help? Yes, so yeah, I mean, as I've mentioned, we do have scholarships available. Um, yeah. So, um, there is a really good section on our website on scholarships. Um, so it lists all of the available scholarships um, that we have available. So as I've mentioned, unfortunately for this year, we have closed the undergraduate ones. So they've all been awarded, but postgraduate scholarships uh, do remain open until July 10th. Thank you, Simon. Uh, so another question, what is the criteria of scholarship for those who want to take admission in BSc? So I, I believe it might be useful if you can just uh, tell students again where and how they can find this information. Sure. So for, I think I've got, um, is my screen still being shared? Can you see that? Yes, yes. All right, let me just try and, um, can you still see it? Uh, yes. Yes, but I only see a, a dream screen. Um, Simon, can you please try again and share your screen again? Okay, yeah, just give me a second.
Okay, so yeah, it's not letting me um, show that particular section, but on our, um, if you go, if students go to our main website, which is royalholloway.ac.uk, then there is an option to show all of the um, scholarships available. I'm just going to try and I'm just going to stop sharing my screen very briefly and then start sharing it again, hopefully on our website. So just bear with me one moment. Okay, can, can, can you see what I see? Can you see our yeah. website? Great. So I'll direct you from our main website. So if, if you go to royalholloway.ac.uk, uh, this is our main um, platform. Now there is lots of information about coronavirus that you can see here. I don't know if you can see my mouse moving, but you can click on there. There's a lot of the frequently asked questions which are answered on there. So look at scholarships. You need to click on studying here. And then on this list, you need to go to the fourth one down, which says fees and funding. You then click on that and it gives you them broken up into undergraduate, postgraduate and research. OK, so, for example, if we click on the postgraduate, we can then click below and it says postgraduate scholarships. And then what we've got here is a list of the scholarships that are available. Now, some are quite specific. So some, for example, this one's just for home and EU. This one's home and EU. So the ones that would be applicable for India students would be the international ones, but not all of the international ones are available to all students. They're quite specific, but from my experience and obviously knowing the Indian market well, the one that is most popular for Indian students that most students can apply for is the Royal Holloway Principal Master's Scholarship. So this is the one where there's 60 available. To be eligible, you must have received an offer at the university and students must have achieved what's known as a 2-1. So students from India generally must have achieved a minimum 60% in their bachelor degree. Um, it gives outline information as to how to apply it's got all of the terms and conditions on here. So this is the best place to find all of our scholarships. And if we just go back, you can do the same for undergraduate. So you click on undergraduate, scholarships and bursaries, and then you've got all of the scholarships listed here. Now the future leaders one is the one that's very popular and it's students that need three A's at A level. Now the equivalent in India for that is usually about 80 to 85 percent um, but as you can see here scholarship applications for 2020 entry have now closed okay um, so yeah that's I hope that answers that is there any other thank you thank you Simon this is really useful and I think it definitely helps with all scholarship related questions um, moving on to the next question uh, well, I have a couple of questions which are very um, core specific. So I'm okay. just going to go over them very quickly. Uh, yeah. so we have a question from uh, Nehru um, looking to apply for MSc International Management. Okay. Um, Gautam um, interested in Masters in Biological Science. Uh, Nikita um, looking for admissions criteria for social sciences and humanities or social work. So it's quite a mix. Yeah, I mean, generally we offer we offer most of those courses. The last one I would need to probably find out a little bit more information. But the best thing to do is I'll, I'll navigate you as as well whilst you're here. So click on studying here, and then click on find the right course and you've got the options of undergraduate, postgraduate or research. So for example, if we click on postgraduate and we type in management, you can see all of the management courses that we have listed on here. So for example, international management, you can click on this. And then if you scroll down, 
students can click on the course structure and they'll see all of the modules listed and they can click on the particular modules and find out what the content of those modules is. So for students that have particular questions about modules or content, of course, my, my best advice is to just check the website because a lot of the answers are on there. And if there's anything really specific that they have that they can't get answers to online, then I would encourage them to, um, to email me and I'll be able to connect them to the department. Um, I'll be happy to do that. Thank you, Simon. Um, another question is um, from um, a student asking, do you offer data science at undergraduate level? If not, yes. can we go, okay, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, okay. so um, we, we offer, so for computer science undergraduate, we offer um, software engineering, information security, or artificial intelligence. So those are the three main areas that we offer at undergraduate. For postgraduate, we offer data science, absolutely. So we offer data science and analytics, which is the one year masters. And we also offer that as the option with a year in industry as well. So there are options in data science. So undergraduate, it's quite specific, but postgraduate, we do certainly offer data science and analytics. Thanks, Simon. Um, so another question is from um, Shizad, um, who actually holds a conditional offer uh, right. from Royal Holloway. Congratulations. Um, in MSc in Information Security um, with a year in industry. So right. his question is, um, when the students get the scholarship offers, if, going, if, apply, if starting in January, yeah, so what they would be advised to do is to apply for the scholarship by the deadline of the 10th of July. And then what will happen is we will get back to students with a decision on the scholarship application by the end of July. And then if this particular student then wants to start their course in January, they can defer. That's not a problem. And the scholarship will transfer over. So what they do is they apply for the scholarship as if they're starting this year. And then if they decide that they want to join us in January, then that scholarship will be moved over to the January start. So they, they basically the deadline for the January scholarships will be the same as for September. So that's 10th of July. Thank you, Simon. Um, so another question from Sonia. Uh, I'm looking for postgraduate study in data science. I have more than 70% in undergraduate. But in 12th, I have 65%. Am I eligible for the postgraduate course? Yeah, it's a good question. We would certainly consider an application from the student um, because they've obviously done very well in their degree. Um, what we would need to do is determine um, which university the student has studied at, um, what particular course they've studied. So with the data science, students need to have studied a degree which contains um, analytical skills some sort of computer engineering. So if they, if they didn't score highly in their 12th standard, it's, it's not the end of the world. I mean, we will look predominantly at their bachelor degree, um, but we'd have to also look at their SOP, their letter of recommendation. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say to them, don't apply. I would certainly encourage an application, but it would, it would involve a little bit more investigating to look at the, their background. So it's, um, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't say now of course, of whether course, they could definitely receive an offer, but I'd certainly encourage an application. And obviously our applications are free of charge, so students don't have to pay to apply. So, and it's quite a, quite a simple process as well. So I would encourage an application in this instance. Thank you, Simon. Um, another question, uh, very specific from Adi. Uh, I would like to know about aid in undergraduate in astrophysics for September 2021. Um, so I think like, we, we did cover this, but please feel free to add. Yeah, you... so we do offer, we offer a Bachelor of Science BSc um, in astrophysics. Um, generally, we look for students need to have studied maths and physics as part of their um, school studies, whether that's A-level or, or 12th standard. Uh, but yes, in answer to that, we certainly offer astrophysics for uh, September 2021. And again, students will be able to find all of that information online. So if they go to the undergraduate 
type in Astro, they'll be able to see. They've got the option of the BSC or the MSI. So the MSI is four years and astrophysics is three years. They can click on the course, find out more information, entry criteria. So students do need maths and physics um, in A levels or the equivalent. So that would be in the um, 12th standard they need to have studied maths and physics and usually it would be 85 percent in the maths and the physics or higher but yes so we we, we certainly do offer that program thank you simon um so and the next question is from rahit um who would like to get more information about msc in mathematics mathematics yeah so we offer um we've got a very strong mathematics department at the university so we offer if i show you So yeah, we, we've basically got the option of offering maths with music, physics, French, computer science, um, philosophy, statistics. So we're actually one of the very few universities in the UK where students can combine math studies with languages or computer science. Um, so yes, so in answer to that, we offer the option of a standalone mathematics bachelor's we offer the MSI, which is the four-year program, which encompasses undergraduate and their masters in one. And then we've got the option of combining maths with um, all of these different areas like statistics, a language, computer science, etc., and even music. So it's very rare in a rare in a UK university that you could combine subjects like maths and music. Um, but music is one of the university's strengths. We're a top five ranked university for our music in the UK. So if students enjoy both subjects and want to combine them, then we are one of the universities, very few universities that can actually do that. So yes, in answer to your question, we do offer maths. Thank you, Simon. Um, the next question is um, from Kushi. Is there IAS coaching available? IAS coaching? I'm not actually yeah. sure what that is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also not sure. Um, okay, so let's move on to the next one. Um, Mandrita asked, what is the criteria for PhD application in big data or data analytics? Yeah, so students will, have need, will be required to hold a bachelor degree. So usually from India, it would be good, good academic standing. So we would look for generally a first class degree. Um, most of our PhD students will have achieved um, and completed a master's program as well. So if you've done your master's in India, we would expect you to have completed that also. Um, and we would have expected students to have studied um, the particular subject that they're looking to study at bachelor level as well. Um, so yeah, so students would need to outline what their research interests are and put that into their proposal. And then we would consider that by the computer science department. Um, generally language wise, if they scored or if they completed their degree from an Indian university and their teaching is all conducted in English and the medium of English, then there's no IELTS requirement as well. Thank you, Simon. Um, the next question, another question about mathematics. I think we covered that. Um, another question, Rowan, uh, what is the criteria for uh, 4,000 discount for machine learning course? I have an offer, but I didn't get it. I have 79% in 10, uh, 78 in 12 and 61 percent in Pune University which comes under exception? Yeah it's a good question so there is an automatic four thousand pound scholarship which is awarded to computer science offer holders to be eligible for that automatic scholarship students need to have achieved an equivalent of a UK first class degree. Now it will vary on what university that you have studied at in India but generally it's a minimum 65 to 70%. So if this particular student scored 61%, then unfortunately 
just slightly below the requirement for that scholarship. But yes, if students score 65, 70% plus, depending on what university they study at, they will be eligible for the computer science scholarship. But unfortunately, it sounds like this student just slightly missed out, I'm afraid. So I'm, so, I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, thank you, Simon. Uh, moving on to the next question. Um, are there, from Adi, uh, are there internships and research opportunities available um, for undergraduate in astrophysics? Absolutely. So students studying any of our undergraduate courses do have the option of taking a sandwich course. So that means that the course is extended to four years. And in the third year, they can do an internship. So yes, absolutely. If students want to do an internship as part of their course, then in conjunction with our careers department, um, we would help students find um, a year placement. And obviously if they're studying astrophysics or mathematics, then we would try and help place that student within a company or a role, um, which is to do with that subject. So in answer to that, yes, we would be able to help students find a placement and they would be able to do that as part of their course. Thank you, Simon. So the same student, um, Adi, uh, is also asking, are there any changes in the admission criteria for undergraduate in astrophysics for September 2021 intake due to COVID? No, I mean, the entry criteria is still the same. So we're not looking to change our entry criteria at the moment. Um, we obviously do offer some flexibility when it comes to clearing. So for those of you that aren't aware, clearing is... Um, when students can apply in August and it's after the UCAS deadline and it's when students that maybe maybe not have a firm place at a university they can apply there may be some flexibility but generally our entry criteria will remain the same for September 2021 as it has for for this September. Thank you Simon. Um, so the next question um, is from uh, Shizad, um, who would like to hear more about January intake. Um, yep. So he's asking, do we have to email Royal Holloway um, to defer September intake to January intake, or will we receive an email? Yeah, it's a very, very, very good question. Um, so if you've received, so if you're, if you've received an offer for a course that will offer the January start, you will receive communication from the university this month. So by the end of June, um, which will outline the process to defer to January if you want to. So you will hear from us soon um, and it will give you the instructions as to how you can defer your offer to the January start. So it's a good question, but you will be communicated to this month and give clear instructions as to how to do that. Thank you, Simon. Um, so the next question is very interesting. Uh, well, at least I find it very interesting. So what are the companies that uh, partner, I suppose, with Royal Holloway uh, for internships? So I think like where can students find internships and does Royal Holloway have any partners? Yeah, it's a very good question. So obviously we offer internships in a wide different area. So it depends on what particular area students are going into. So for example, we have a lot of links with companies um, in computer science. So if students want to study computer science, we have a number of companies that our students go to work for, whether that's in banking, investment, um, computer science, IT. So we've had students that have gone to do internships at places like HSBC, um, Rolls-Royce, um, there's, there's so many different companies. I think rather than me listing every company that we've sent students to, it would be helpful for this student to email me with what area of internship they're looking at, because then I can narrow it down. So for example, if the student's wanting to study computer science or IT, I will be able to direct them to a list of the companies that our graduates and our interns have gone to in that area. So I would advise this student to, to email me um, and, and I'll happily list the, the courses for them and the, sorry, the internship companies that these students go to. 
Great, thank you, Simon. Uh, I had a question. Um, is it a disadvantage if an applicant is not able to give IELTS due to COVID? Not at all. I mean, if students are from India, I mean, it would be helpful to know if this student has already applied or not. Um, most students from India that, that apply to us aren't required to take IELTS. We waive that if they've studied at their university in English or if they scored 70% or higher in their English in their 12th standard. For students that perhaps have been asked to provide an English score, if they haven't been able to take an IELTS for obvious reasons that the um, test centres are shut, there are a number of online English tests that the university will accept. Um, so there's online versions of um, Duolingo, for example, which is an English test. Um, I'd be happy to, to provide this student with a list of the online um, English tests that we accept. So no, in answer to their question, they won't be at an, a disadvantage if they're not able to take an IELTS because there are alternatives available um, for this year and beyond. Brilliant. Thank you, Simon. Um, another very interesting question uh, from Suvam. Can you give an estimate of living in the UK? Yeah, good question. So for students from India that are required to apply for a student visa, they have to provide evidence of money, which is called living costs. So students from India, and, and as well as other countries, need to provide evidence that they have £11,385. So that's 11385 That is what's deemed living costs, and that will include housing, books, transport, food, um, and that's what is required aside from the tuition fees um, for living costs. Thank you, Simon. Um, another very quick question um, is from Lakshita. Is marine engineering available? Um, if yes, are there any scholarships available? Sorry, was that marine engineering? Yes. Unfortunately, no, we don't offer marine engineering, I'm afraid. We do. We have electronic engineering at Royal Holloway, but we don't offer marine engineering, I'm afraid. Thank you, Simon. Uh, another question from Tetchpal. When do you start issuing CAS? Very good question. So CASs will be issued for September starts from June 21st onwards. So that's three months before the start of the course. And we will issue CASs to students that have an unconditional offer and students that have paid the £3,000 tuition fee deposit. So yes, so if they're starting in September, we will issue those from mid-June, so June 21st. For January starts, um, we will be looking again at three months before the start date. So we'd be looking at sort of October, mid-October. Thank you, Simon. Um, the next question is from um, Tushmita. Um, what is the eligibility for future leader scholarship? We did future cover this uh, quite yes. a lot. But... Yeah, so the, yeah, the International Future Leaders Scholarship that's an undergraduate scholarship worth £4,000 and students need to have achieved a minimum of, I believe, 80%. But let's double check whilst we're here so we can help the student. Are you still able to see my screen? Yes. That's good. Okay, so this is the International Future Leaders Scholarship, which is this one here. So we can see here that this is for students that have scored ABB or equivalent, £4,000, there's 30 available, and from India, the equivalent is, so we've got all our countries listed here, 80%. So if you see that there, students would need a minimum 80% to be eligible to apply for the International Future Leaders Scholarship. Thank you, Simon. Um, the next question is from Sanspar. Uh, where do we get the admission form? Okay, so for undergraduate students, they apply through UCAS. For postgraduate students, the online application is very simple. So if we go to our main website, 
and I'll direct you. So students can type in royalholloway.ac.uk, studying here, they can click applying, postgraduate, and then there's how to apply to be a postgraduate and then there's a link here which says apply now so it's all done online and students obviously if they want to use SIUK their counsellor in their office the local office will be able to um, submit this application on the student's behalf um, and upload all of their supporting documents so a lot of this a lot of the answer to this question depends on what course they're applying for whether it's a bachelor or a master's but this is certainly the process for a, a master's degree. Thank you, Simon. So, um, Sanskar, I, I would encourage you to get in touch with your counsellor and discuss this process in detail. Um, the next question, um, is psychology available? Yes, we offer psychology. We offer that at bachelor and postgraduate and master's level. So, yes, we do offer psychology. Thank you, Simon. Uh, the next question from uh, Archana. Uh, I have applied for the postgraduate data science course without the internship year. Is okay. it possible to change it to the one with placement year? Yes, absolutely. So we will be able to do that. So um, students can just email. Well, if this particular student has applied through an agent, which I would imagine they have through you guys, your counsellor can either email me or email our admissions office and we can change the course to the um, to the two-year program which includes the work placement so yes no, not, that's not a problem we can do that brilliant uh, the next question from Mandri Mandrita um, is it mandatory to have a research paper before applying for PhD yes so students will be required to um, complete a research proposal um, and then they will send that to the department and we will then determine if there is um, a potential supervisor for this um, student. So yes, we wouldn't, we wouldn't ask any students to apply until they have had confirmation from the department that there is a supervisor available to supervise their um, research degree. Thank you, Simon. The next question is from Rowan. Will the January intake course be shorter and fast paced compared to September intake? It's going to be the same, really. So they'll, they'll just finish that little bit later. So students that start in January um, will complete their studies in December instead of um, kind of beginning of September. So it's the same course, it's exactly the same modules, structured the same, but it's just, it's just, um, just finishes at a different time and starts at a different time. Thank you, Simon. Uh, the next question, uh, is the chemistry department available? Um, we don't have a chemistry, unfortunately. Thank you, Simon. The next question um, is quite student specific. So um, I, I would also encourage the students to email Simon directly or get in touch with the counsellor. Um, I have done BCom with 50% and BED 64% marks. Can I apply for the MSc International Management? Um, generally for International Management, I think we would need a minimum 55% for that course. Uh, in fact, we can check that very quickly. So did you say they scored 50%? Yes. So if we type in... Uh, so on the website, we can actually... So this is the um, MSc International Management. And if we click on Entry Criteria, and then if we select India from this list... So yeah, students need a minimum of 55 to 60%. So if they scored 50%, unfortunately, they would not be suitable to apply for this course. Thank you, Simon. Uh, moving on to the next one. Can one submit their extracurricular activities and SOP from professors and students outside their school for undergraduate? Um, generally, for students that apply undergraduate, their letter of recommendation would need to be from somebody that's taught them at school. 
So most of our bachelor students will get their um, one of their teachers or their guidance counsellor at their school to, to supply them with a reference. Um, they usually upload that as part of the UCAS application. So if they're applying via UCAS, the academic or the teacher at their school would usually be the one that would um, upload their personal state, sorry, their letter of recommendation. So it would need to be somebody that's taught the student at school uh, when applying. Thank you, Simon. The next question, um, when should the student apply for their visa if coming for January intake? Yeah, so we can only issue the CAS number three months before the start of the course. So as long as the student has paid their deposit, holds an unconditional offer, then they would be available to apply for their visa from the 21st of, so yeah, I don't think the start date for January has been confirmed yet, but it would be exactly three months before the start date in January that they can um, start applying for their visa. Thank you, Simon. Um, the next question, uh, are there part-time jobs available for international students? Yes, so absolutely. So there's a number of roles available at the university um, in a variety of different areas, whether that's in retail or whether that's working in the library. There's also jobs available outside of the university. So Egham is a, a thriving town um, and there are opportunities to work while studying their visas, their student visas will enable them to study. Um, sorry, will enable them to work. So yes, in answer to that, there, there is opportunities to do some part-time work. Thank you, Simon. Um, the next question, well, we have two questions from Tracy. Um, what is the good higher, what are the good uh, higher studies after hotel management for you degree? Um, and is doing MBA in hotel management um, a good in the UK? Yeah, I mean, we unfortunately, we don't offer an MBA at Royal Holloway. Um, and we also don't offer hotel management. So I'm probably not best placed to answer this question. Um, but there are some very good hospitality courses within the UK. Um, so it would be my recommendation that um, Tracy, did you say her name was Tracy? Um, Tracy. Yeah, speaks to her guidance counsellor to, to, to help find the institution that best fits their needs. It probably sounds like we're not the best institution for them um, if they're looking for hospitality, um, but there's lots of universities that do offer that, so they just have to keep, keep searching. Thank you, Simon. Uh, another question about January intake. Uh, when can the students going for January intake receive costs? Yeah, so similar to, to the other question. So it would be for students starting in January, the CAS would be issued three months before the January start date. So you'd be looking at um, October, but we will be communicating to all of our offer holders um, by the end of this month with, with further instructions as to how that will work. Simon, uh, the next question is from Shirkanda. Um, for January intake, uh, will it affect the job prospect with companies? Not really, because students that come to study with us will be able to benefit from the GIR. So for those that aren't familiar with the GIR, it's called the Graduate Immigration Route, and that replaces the post-study work visa. So what I'm basically getting at is that we will be having a stay back option in the UK so students will be able to stay for up to two years after they complete their studies so no it won't disadvantage them because they'll be able to stay for up to two years at the end of their course um, the UK government are still in the process of um, drawing up the terms and conditions and the criteria for that so we don't have a lot of information on it yet but it is the expectation that it will be announced at some point this year. Um, obviously, they've got quite a lot of other things going on at the moment, um, but we would expect them to be issuing more information about that. And so students can reassured that they will be able to stay back for up to two years to gain valuable work experience after completion of their studies. Thank you, Simon. The next question is from um, Sumati. Is it necessary to have TOEFL or IELTS for PhD? 
Generally not. If they've studied their degree in India at an institution which is the medium of instruction has been English, then they generally will not be required to um, submit an IELTS. So that would be waived. Thank you, Simon. Uh, the next question from Adi. Uh, can an applicant receive an unconditional offer um, in undergraduate before submitting their class 12 final scorecard? It's a good question. Um, we generally would need to um, receive, no, they, they would generally receive a conditional offer if they are uh, predicted the correct grades. We wouldn't be issuing any unconditional offers um, until we'd seen their final grades. So they could still make an application and receive a conditional offer, but the unconditional offer would come once we get those final uh, scorecards in. Sure. Thank you, Simon. The next question from Joan. Uh, do we need to apply for uni part-time job before or after coming on campus? They would apply for part-time work on campus after they arrive. So usually there's something called freshers weeks or like welcome week. And there will be an opportunity for uh, the careers and employability department to outline the part-time work options. So that would happen once they arrive on campus. Thank you, Simon. Um, a question from Archana. I have a bachelor's degree in electrical and electronics engineering with 8.17 GPA, and I okay. have five years of first experience in IT industry. Will I be considered for the data science postgraduate course? Yes, I think that sounds like a very strong candidate based on the information that you've provided there. So, um, We'd obviously have to look at the transcript and look at their particular modules, but generally they sound like a very strong candidate. So yes, we would encourage that particular student to, to make an application. Thank you, Simon. So we have a very um, specific question from Sanspar. Uh, can you tell me who three year fee for undergraduate, but it doesn't say which one. Okay. Um, so, what is the best way to check Fees, yeah, it's literally, it. yeah, no, the best way to check the fee is by going on our website. So again, you click on studying here, find the right course. So if we go for, say, business, if I can spell it right, there we go. So business and management, we'll do that one. Um, click on the course. And then further down, there is an option that says fees and funding. And you can see here the international fee is 18,300 and it contains that information on all of the courses online. So you just click down and you click on fees and funding and you'll see what the international fee is there. Thank you, Simon. Uh, the next question is from Peter Paul. Um, I have 51% in Bachelor of Arts, 62% in Bachelor of Education and 55 in Master in Economics. Am I eligible to MSc Economics? Yes, I believe we would, we would certainly welcome an application with that. With that background so yes we would um i mean as i've mentioned we do look at applications holistically so whilst we primarily look at their their academic background we do also look at their reference their um, motivation letter or their sop as they call it um but yes this student does sound like quite a strong student um and would probably make a good um profile fit for the economics course so yes i would encourage an application Brilliant. Thank you, Simon. Uh, the next question, and I think this is the last question we have, is from okay. Isha. Uh, yeah. I have done my first year LLB from MIT. Will my credit be transferred to the second year of LLB undergraduate? Yeah, so we do look at transfers. So students can look at transferring and we look at it on a like for like basis. So what they would need to do is when they make an application to the university, when they do that through UCAS, they select the point of entry, which is basically the year of entry as number two. And then what they would have to do is send um, their module descriptions and a transcript showing all the classes they studied in the first year and the descriptions and the grades. And then what we would do is see how that matches our course. Um, so, yeah, it certainly is possible to look at second year entry, but we do very much look at it on a case by case basis. So um, we would certainly consider that. But 
we'd have to look into that a little bit more information. Thank you, Simon. So uh, I, I still see a couple of more questions coming through. Um, so the next question is from Joan. Um, Freshers Week will happen for Jan. E so is Freshers Week will well sorry will Freshers Week happen for January intake as well? Yeah, we would expect there to be some form of welcome week. Um, we don't really know at this stage how how that would work or what it would look like. Uh, depending on how the pandemic pans out. Um, but whether that's an online welcome week or whether that's in person, there would be there would be an orientation that would happen in January, yes. Thank you, Simon. Uh, so I have another question. Um, so can you please once again share your email address? With yes, everyone. of course. Yes, just give me a second. And, and then moving on to the, I think this is the, the last question. Um, what are the future opportunities for students in undergraduate and what kind of research opportunities will be available? Uh, and one more from the same student, is there a virtual tour of the university um, available? Yes, so there is, there is virtual tours available. Um, we do have um, open days listed on our website. So students will actually be able to join one of our virtual open days um, where there is a tour of the campus. Another bit of good advice um, is actually, if you go on YouTube and just type in Royal Holloway, University of London, there's some great videos on there which show students, staff, uh, tours of the campus. So I would certainly encourage um, students to, to have a look at that. Um, hopefully you can see my email address on there. Is that showing now? Um, I believe so, yes. Great. So if anyone has any specific questions, they can just um, email me directly and I'll be happy to guide them or, or answer them in more detail. Thank you, Simon. Um, so one more question. Um, do we have IELTS waivers for CBSE plus to pass out? Yeah, so students that have done the Central Board, Secondary Education, CBSC, if they score 70% or above in the English, then we would waive the English requirement. Thank you, Simon. And um, the final question, um, very specific. Um, uh, the student scored 82.14 in the 10th grade, IELTS is 7.5, but 12 marks are 61. Uh, the student has experience um, of an internship currently. Uh, will they be eligible for LLB undergraduate? They would, with 61% in their 12th, um, they would be required to do the international foundation year. Because we look for a minimum 80%, um, we wouldn't be able to consider them for direct entry onto the LLB. They would need to do the foundation programme. Thank you, Simon. Um, so I think this is it from all, uh, from the questions uh, that okay. we had. Uh, I would like to thank you uh, for hosting a very, very useful session today. Oh, thank you. It's been a pleasure. And I would like to thank all our students who attended. Um, and please feel free to, to, to make any final comments, Simon. Yeah, I mean, I would just like to say to everyone that's, that, that's still listening that thank you very much for your time. Um, I know we're in very interesting times at the moment, um, something that none of us have ever probably had to go through before, but just to like reach out to you all, let you know that we are here. We are still um, operating as a university. Um, we've got the option of the flexible offer as well. So even if you can't make it in September, you can start your studies online and join us at a later stage. And for some of the courses, you can join us in January and you can see my email address. So if you have any particular questions or anything at all, however big or small the question is, please do email me. I'll be happy to help you. And um, that's it from me. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, Simon. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Bye.